Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be going over the autopilot options on the Airbus A310 Microsoft Flight Simulator. Let's get started. So first things first, uh, the autopilot is going to be a little bit different from the autopilots you're probably used to for a number of different ways. You know, traditionally when you think of things like autopilot, you like push a couple buttons and off you go. Uh, this system is different and it's uh, integral to the FMS especially. Uh, there's definitely what I call kind of the manual modes for the autopilot, but then there are also a lot of kind of, I've got to push a button in order to make it work. So before we get too carried away here, a couple things we just want to check before we start playing with the autopilot. That's the fact that you have all the pitch trim as well as the auto throttle systems enabled. Uh, you want to make sure those are activated before we get too carried away. Uh, the next thing you want to know is uh, this is kind of a weird situation, especially when we start dealing with the automatic throttle on here, is uh, don't forget that this particular throttle, uh, because of the way they mapped it to be able to have it reverse in the same axis here, um, you have to be really careful with it. That, like I have a very noisy throttle, and if I were to suddenly touch my throttle right now, the whole thing would start twitching uncontrollably all over the place. So um, just be careful that whatever controls you are using are not going to be fighting against the autopilot controls themselves. So uh, let's go ahead and float over here and uh, see what we need to know here. I'm actually going to move my head just a little bit so you can kind of see what's going on. So basically with the automatic pilot is you have three main flavors of modes, if uh, that makes any sense. Uh, the first mode, of course, is going to be what they call kind of your standard or your manual mode. Uh, this is when you're basically going to pull the knob, tell it what you want it to do, and then go ahead and uh, make tweaks here and there. The second mode is what they call profile mode. Uh, That's kind of your equivalent of your LNAV, which would be your nav button, and your VNAV, which is basically going to be your profile button. The final mode is what they call auto, and that's kind of everything all contained into one pile. Uh, the auto feature basically says, not only am I going to get the profile mode, but I'm also going to have control over the engine itself. Remember on this particular aircraft that, are, oh, I probably should set that before I get too carried away here. Um, one thing that we have here is your thrust limit and all that can actually be controlled over in these particular options. You can actually set it if you want maximum continuous. And this acts basically as an automatic thrust versus a speed system. So that's the first thing you want to kind of work with. Next item, and uh, for those of you who are very familiar with Airbus, uh, you're already very, very familiar with the concept that if I pull the knob out, it means I want to do it. If I push the knob, I want the computer to control it. That's only partway true in this version of the Airbus. Like I said, it's an older model of the Airbus, so it's slightly different in that regard. So let's go ahead and show you a couple different options. So uh, right now, I'm flying on a pretty straightforward flight plan, making my way over to Pauling. That's in upstate New York. No, well, not upstate. It's um, eastern New York, let's call it. And I'm supposed to be at this altitude of a 288 and all those things, and it looks like I'm not going to get there. Uh, the reason I'm not going to get there is because right now my heading selector is telling me that I'm limited 4,000 feet, which makes sense because this is the altitude that I pre-selected because of my star. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and wiggle this a little bit. By the way, if you want to come from thousands to hundreds, if you come to this button and you click in on it by pressing the up arrow, you can now select the hundreds. If you push in on it again, it'll give you the thousands. Now notice I've gone ahead and selected my new altitude I want to climb to, but even though I'm in profile and nav mode, the computer is not automatically ordering up a climb. If I wanted to climb, I have to tell it how we're going to get there. We have a couple different ways to do that. Uh, the one method, of course, we could do uh, set this to a vertical speed option. The other option is we could press the level change button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and press the level change button. So what that's going to do is it's going to order my auto throttle to kick up some power here. It's going to bring us up to thrust. It's a thrust, not a speed in this case, in which case it's going to pop me up to 94.4%, which is my limit to my current power setting. Now you're saying here, saying if I want to get up a little bit sooner, can I change this mode? Yeah, sure. There's nothing stopping you from coming and pressing MCT, or of course, leaving it down here in automatic, which is probably going to be fine for us. So you notice the aircraft is now climbing rather aggressively. You know, it's a shooting up. We've uh, kicked that throttle up to about 95%. So uh, we're climbing pretty aggressively here. But you notice while we're in our level change mode, you can also check out the fact that oh, my altitude is increasing, my airspeed is not changing, which is one of the most popular reasons level change mode is used, because it doesn't mess up your navigation as much. Now, let's say we get a call from air traffic control saying, uh, could you level off? And you say, oh, no, I want to level off. Well, how do I level off? What do I do? What, if I, what, what, what do I do? So all we're going to do is press altitude hold. And as soon as you press that button, what you're going to do is you're going to command the system to go ahead and level the aircraft off immediately. If I actually stick my head down here a little bit, you see how it says speed, which means select speed, out, meaning I'm in an altitude mode, nav, meaning I'm on nav mode. So now notice when I ran over there and I mashed that altitude hell button that it took a pretty significant amount of time to level off. Uh, the other thing worth noting here is if I look down here at this little window, it has given me a speed. Uh, this is my currently selected speed. Uh, the reason I know that the aircraft is going to maintain the speed with that throttle is by taking a look in this upper left corner and seeing that speed is selected. Also notice we're in a very, very aggressive descent right now, and you're probably going, ah, the passengers must be freaking out. Oh yeah, they're freaking out pretty bad. And the reason we're in such an aggressive descent is because I mangled that altitude hold button. Now, let's say we go ahead and get a call from air traffic control that says something really, really bizarre. They say, uh, descend to 5,000. You're like, ah... Uh. <laughs> 
Okay, uh, whatever you say, air traffic control. So I'm gonna go ahead and give this a wiggle. I noticed, by the way, nothing has changed because we haven't told the computer how we want to change. Now you're saying, well, what if I get rid of this altitude hold? Can I shut off altitude hold mode? No. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna tug this. I'm actually going to pull this out by pressing the down arrow. Now you're noticing that my engines are automatically spooling down. And you're also noticing that the level change light came on underneath. Pulling this and popping level change is the same thing in this version of the Airbus. Like I said, it's a slightly different, but you'll notice now that the aircraft is going to start descending down to 5,000 feet. The auto thrust system is going to main 250 knots. But remember, because we're level changing, the automatic thrust setting was smart enough to know to back the throttle off to keep our 250 knots and our descent here. So let's say uh, they call us and say a uh, level off is 6,000. So of course I can come over here and crank this to 6,000. What you're gonna notice is, did you see how it went from blue out and it went over here to that out with a little asterisk? That simply says that, oh, oh, okay, I'm in the process of capturing the out that you just ordered up here, the altitude, I should say. So you can see my auto thrust system is automatically uh, booting up here and getting us back up to a speed of uh, 250 knots. So that's basically how we're gonna control altitudes. So now what we're gonna do is tell the computer to have control of my altitude altitude setting. So what altitude is it going to select? Well, if you come down here, you can see we're going direct polling right now, and it wants us to be at an altitude of flight level 330. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here, dial in that flight level 330. Now I'm going to go ahead and press the profile button. Now notice as soon as I mash the profile button, many things happened. First of all, the aircraft commanded to climb. Why? Why? Because uh, the currently desired altitude is flight level 330. And we've also gone ahead and selected an altitude of 330. And of course, we have the automatic thrust in here. So since everything is good, the aircraft has gone ahead and commanded enough power to get us back into a climb. It's maintaining this constant 250. Well, it's supposed to be 250, but we kind of surprised it with that full thrust. Now you're probably saying, well, that actually works really, really well. Um, now the computer is going to go ahead and control my vertical speed. Yes, absolutely. Uh, right now, like you can see, it's uh, basically jacked everything up and it's going to climb. And another really nice trick with the profile, and we'll see this in a second. Let me cheat just a tiny bit. Whoa, got to love that fast forward. Watch what happens when we cross 10,000 feet. Did you see what just happened? Somebody updated my little uh, markers here. But the other thing is you can see the new commanded speed by the FMS, by zooming in on this one right here, is now gonna be 325 knots. And that's going to be our desired speed. Now you're probably saying, well, how come this is all blanked out right now? How come you can't set the speed? Well, the reality is you can set the speed. If I were to pull this knob out, I can now come in here and desire whatever speed I wanna do. Let's say I wanna do uh, 310 knots, for example. You'll notice that's now the selected speed. But you'll also notice as soon as we did that and pulled that speed out saying, I want control of it, you'll notice it kicked me off of profile mode and immediately popped me back to level change mode. So let's say, oh, that was a mistake. I didn't actually want this one. So I'm actually gonna come back and press the profile button and that's gonna automatically reselect the 325 knots you can see the power is not going to change because auto thrust is turned on and we're going to continue our climb up to 33,000 feet so you can already see how beneficial that is so when you're working with this uh, just a couple quick things you got to keep in mind uh, this auto thrust mode if for some reason auto thrust was off and we commanded a climb we could run into a situation where we basically fly the aircraft out of energy because we don't have enough manual thrust to be able to safely get to an altitude likewise when you order things like a descent if you have the throttle all the way up and auto thrust is off, you could run into a fun situation where the aircraft basically overspeeds itself because the engines won't spool themselves back down. The auto thrust system was really designed to work with everything. So let's go ahead and take a look at our next buttons. And that's going to be the heading select option here. This gives us a couple different options. So the first one is if I hold my mouse out here, you're gonna notice there's a thing that allows you to define the bank limit of this aircraft. So if I come back here and I wanna set the bank limit to 15 degrees, I can do that. If I wanna go ahead and let the bank limit be normal, which is based on load and speed and stuff like that, you can pop it over to that position. The other thing, of course, so with this heading select, is this gives us the ability to dial in a specific heading we wanna travel at. So right now I see I'm traveling about 240. Well, let's say I want to fly at that 240. I can come down here to the 240 and you can notice right now my current heading mode is nav, by the way. I can go ahead and just select this. Again, if I wanna increase it, I wanna come down here and decrease it. I can go set it and then I can go ahead and press it to go ahead and grab control of the heading mode. 
So now when I stick my head down here, you're going to notice it says heading select mode. And what it's going to try to do is it's going to try to take the heading that I'm currently on. So now if I come up here and I say, uh, give me a 230 degrees, you'll notice the aircraft, because I'm in heading cell mode, is going to begin a left turn to 270, or 230 degrees rather. And you can also see that down on our little HSI, that is our selected current heading. Now one of the cool things with this is, uh, let's go ahead and shut the heading select off for a second. I press that button and it's going to say heading mode. You're saying, what is heading mode? Heading mode simply means maintain the heading I was on when I pushed the button. So if I come back over here, let's say I set this to uh, 245 degrees. Let's say I press heading select. So now the aircraft is going to execute a right turn. And now let's say I really want to stay on this heading right now. If I shut off heading select, notice it's going to snap me right back to heading mode. And it's going to maintain the current heading that we're trying to do. Another thing I want to point out while I'm making this climb here is, did you notice that we kept climbing based on our existing profile? Uh, none of that has actually changed at any point during this entire flight so far. You're probably saying, well, why is it, why is it climbing? Because remember, my roll does not have to be coupled with my pitch. And that's kind of an interesting thing. Now, while we're over here, uh, let's say we want to go ahead and maintain a constant vertical speed. Uh, let's say we get to the top of our climb or something like that. We want to start a manual descent. All right, we're sitting here at the top of our uh, little flight here. Uh, New York City is somewhere over there. The weather in uh, this part of the world is not great the last few days, but hey, it happens. So first things first, if I stick my head down here at the HSI, you probably notice this little downwards bending arrow. That is my calculated top of descent. Uh, that's the point where if I let the computer do its thing, it would start making us descend automatically. Now let's say we get a call from air traffic control that says uh, descent maintain uh, 310, our uh, flight level 310. So we'd say, okay, so let's say we want to descend there at, I don't know, 2000 thousand feet per minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here. Instead of pulling this or hitting level change, I'm actually going to come over here, pull this knob out, and go ahead and rotate this to pick my desired vertical speed. Now, in this particular case, I've uh, decided to do a vertical speed of minus 2,000 feet per minute. Now, as soon as I do that, let me stick my head down here a little bit. You're going to notice the VS mode turns green, meaning it's the currently selected mode. And you're also going to notice that this little out light has turned on to let us know that we're trying to capture that particular out. Now, there's one other detail which I think is always really neat in these aircraft. And you get this little curved line here. That line is going to represent the point that we're going to achieve that particular altitude. So, for example, if we know we need to hit a specific altitude at this point here, we could actually basically tweak that knob until we got it exactly in that position. Now, another thing worth noting is because we're still in auto thrust mode right now, you're going to notice that the aircraft automatically spooled its engines down to maintain the constant speed, in which case uh, we have Mach 0.82 selected at this particular moment. Now, the cool thing here is we can actually go ahead and level this aircraft off at any time and then switch back over to the regular mode. But for the sake of our demonstration here, I'm actually going to let it drift ourselves down to 3100. Uh, <laughs> I'm just not used to dealing with altitudes this high. I'm a general aviation guy. Uh, 31,000 feet or flight level true zero. So you can see it goes ahead and it puts a little star to say we're currently in capture mode and it's going to go start leveling us off. Now since that's all captured, there's nothing stopping me from coming over here and I'm pressing the profile button. Now you'll notice when I press this profile button a million times, nothing happens. Now, if you remember, when we took the vertical speed mode, we basically hijacked the whole process from this particular item here. So we basically overridden our ability to kind of opportunely change this. Obviously, pulling that back out, it's not going to do anything for us because of the fact that we're not going to be changing our current altitude. You know, you can come racing over here. You can pull this out all you want. You can push it in all you want. Remember, pushing it in just lets you change that number right there. But of course, coming in here and hitting profile, you basically skipped that particular point. So now what's going to happen is instead of having direct control of our descent, the whole operation is going to be holding off until we reachieve the altitude that we selected. Now you're probably sitting here going, well, can we come down here and adjust this? Well, watch what happens when we do that. You see how I went in there and I dialed in that new altitude and nothing happened? As a matter of fact, like I was saying a moment ago, if I come back over here to the profile button and bang it a bunch of times, it simply will not accept it because we're no longer on the profile of that previous mission. Now, it's worth noting here that um, if I were to come over here, again, I can't change any of these modes out. I can pull this one out. I can pull it. None of those are going to matter right now because of what I've just done. Now, one of the people will probably say, well, what if you go to the init page and you change your flight altitude? Well, let's find out what happens. So we set this to this mode. When I go back over to my flight plan page, you'll notice now that my flight level is 310. So you're saying, well, does that mean we can hit profile? Yes, that means we can finally hit the profile. And now that we've reactivated the profile, we've established the position where we can start our automatic descent. 
So if I come back down here, you're going to notice we have this little down arrow coming up in a few moments. That is when the computer, if it is in profile and auto thrust mode, will automatically begin descending through this chaos of constraints that we're about to be running into in just a few miles here. So what I'm going to do is to get us all set up for that is I'm going to pre-select the minimum altitude I want to fly at. Now, if you remember, we're going to be flying all the way down to the ground with this aircraft here. So I'm going to go over here and go ahead and start cranking this thing. Again, I'm not selecting any other modes. I'm going to bring it all the way down to our minimum altitude. Go ahead and push in real quickly here, which incredibly is going to be 800 feet here. Perfect. So that means if I don't touch anything, uh, when we cross that descent point, which is coming up in just a few moments, the aircraft will actually start descending on its own because I'm at my cruise altitude, I've selected an altitude below, and I'm in profile and nav mode. And now we've hit that point. Now notice the aircraft has this new little star here that says we have vertical deviation. Uh, the reason for that is even though we have set all this wonderful stuff up here, we haven't actually given the air aircraft permission to begin its actual descent. So what I just did is I gave this a quick little tug right there, which now allows the computer to start calculating its appropriate descent rate to make us go down. And you're probably looking at these numbers going, oh my God, why are they shooting up so fast? That's uh, because I was on time acceleration. But now what's gonna happen is as the aircraft descends, because we're still on auto thrust mode, you're gonna notice these two engines are gonna pull themselves down. You're also gonna notice that we're gonna start slowly catching up to our vertical deviation here. And that when we get to the next altitude constraint, which is coming up in a moment, by the way, I know those constraints are flipped on. If I zoom out a little bit, you can actually see that my next altitude constraint is gonna be 12,000. So the aircraft, since we're still in profile mode, even though we have 800 feet selected, it will not actually allow us to cross that particular point until we get at a safe spot. Now notice we're just about lined up with our vertical deviations. What's gonna start happening in a few moments here is the whole aircraft is going to kind of start snapping itself back up into a better spot so that it can kind of all stay on that glide path there. So like see how my engines are starting to spool themselves back up a little bit? So now they're gonna go ahead and level the aircraft, give us a couple little bit of thrust, and they're gonna to try to go ahead and center that diamond. Now, if I was a nicer pilot here, what I would have done, of course, is I would have uh, taken my time, got that all nice and centered by hand, and then gone through the motions of started our descent here. But the important thing is, even though you cross the descent, unless you give this thing a tug, it will not automatically trick trigger that. And by the way, you're probably saying, why did that not activate flight level change mode when I gave that a tug? Uh, the reason why is because we were in profile mode when we gave that thing a tug and it activated the profile defense, uh, defense. wouldn't that be cool? Profile descent mode. So as long as this is enabled, uh, we don't have to worry about anything too, too much here. And everything's basically gonna take it down from here. Now, of course, the uh, last component and the part that everybody needs to stress out the most about is what happens when we get there? How do I actually program the ILS and I make sure this thing lands itself? Well, we'll take a look at that next time. Enjoy.